Where do I even begin? Let's start with that this is the fourth time I'm recording this video. The first few times was within a week of quitting news and I just cried way too much. So I was like, scrap that. The next few times was between the two to three week time frame of leaving news and I felt like it was still too fresh. And I really wanted to marinate in why I made this decision and have some time for myself in understanding what I really want and what I still am going to continue to accomplish in my personal and professional life. And so I just, I needed some time to really understand. So without further ado, if you're new here, my name is Sophia, Sophia Espinosa, I'm from Miami. I am Hispanic and I went to University of Miami and then I got my first job in central Illinois. Lots of you guys followed my journey in videos like this where I told you I applied to 153 news jobs just to get one call back, which wasn't even one of the ones that I applied for. This was a, a completely out of the blue, um, random email that I got from my news directors. And they pretty much convinced me to come to Central Illinois. And I am never gonna regret going into news. And I'm never going to regret moving to Illinois because of the people I've met, everything that I've been able to accomplish here and how much I've learned as a person and how much I've lost my Miami accent. I'm working on getting my Miami accent back, guys, because I definitely lost it in news trying to be so professional all the time. I'll try to input time cues as to what I'll be speaking about and to what factored into my decision to leave news. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching in advance. So for those who don't know, um, I'm sure you do because you're watching this video. I was the morning news anchor for our NBC affiliate TV station here in Central Illinois called WAND. And I could make this a 40, 50 minute long video if I just spoke about how positive my experience was in terms of the people I met, my management, the stories I covered. It's just 10 out of 10. And that is what made my decision so hard. So for the longest time, I have always wanted to be a news anchor. That was quite literally my dream. My dream was to be a news anchor, uh, specifically a morning news anchor in Miami. So when I moved to Central Illinois, my goal was also to start small, to get big and to get to Miami. And I was offered a reporter position. And after one year of being a reporter, I was promoted to morning anchor. And that was at the time, pretty much the best thing that could have ever happened to me. I was overflowing with joy and excitement and I was so inspired to be a morning news anchor wake up with people and let them know everything that they needed to know in their community to start their day all the good stuff I'm like this is the biggest blessing and I took that position and my goal was to use this position and that experience to help me get a job in Florida in Miami and be potentially a news anchor there which is a really long road, by the way. I didn't see myself doing anything in Miami until at least 15 years because it just, maybe 10, because it just takes that long to try to make it into cities like Miami. As much as it was such a big blessing to get that promotion, it was also the biggest curse. That's because, and I hate admitting this, I could not do this schedule. And that is something I never thought I would say, like ever, ever, ever. Two years ago, Sophie was watching this video. She'd be like, what the F are you talking about? What I mean by that is like, I'm sure you know, most morning news anchor have a bizarre sleep schedule and a bizarre life schedule. Mine specifically was going to sleep at five, waking up at two. And I did that. I luckily was someone who could go to sleep right at five every single day without taking any melatonin or any medicine or anything like that, just because of how exhausted I was from waking up at two. So it kind of made sense. And so before I started the job, I asked every single morning anchor I could think of for advice and tips on how to make this schedule work for me. And I wrote down all the tips, eat healthy, drink water, work out, like do everything to be a healthy human being so that this schedule works for you. Blackout curtains, um, blue light glasses to help with like minimizing the light that comes into your eyes later on in the day so you can go to sleep at five. Just everything. I tried everything. It was a really hard pill to swallow when a year in to being anchor, I was living my life like a zombie. Okay, that is the best way I can put it and describe it. 
I can also describe it by saying um, when I want people to understand, I say, okay, you know when you have a really early flight, like at two or three in the morning, you have to wake up for your five o'clock five o'clock flight. How you feel waking up in the middle of the night or when you go to pee, like literally that's a, another good example. When you go pee in the middle of the night and you feel super groggy and you feel super like tired and it makes sense because you're gonna go right back to sleep or if you're going on a flight, you know, you're probably gonna feel shitty for a couple of days and then you'll feel fine because, or for a day or two because then you go back to your normal routine. Well, I lived in a constant state of that grogginess and that took away so much of me of my personality, the way I go about things, I was just constantly exhausted that I couldn't even be myself. And that is really strange to say. I could go to sleep for eight hours at the drop of a hat at any time of the day just because of how tired I was. And I tried to let my body get used to it month after month and it just, I honestly never got used to it. And I'd wake up with I'd wake up and go to sleep with so much anxiety and stress because I was worried about whether or not this night's rest was going to make me feel well rested to start my day. And so I'd worry about that going to sleep. And then when I would wake up, I'd be worried about how do I feel? And I'd be like over analyzing my body. I'm like, do I feel good? Do I feel like I'm ready? Like it was just insane how much I, how much anxiety I had around sleep. Cause I know how important sleep is for your body. So I was just always worried about being an unhealthy individual. Like I work out, I eat so healthy, I barely drink. And so I've always wanted, I've always claimed and wanted to be a healthy person. And I felt like my sleep was not healthy. Apart from that, about a year and a half into the schedule, I started to experience major hair loss. And so I'm talking clumps in the shower, clumps when I brush my hair, this is the long story short because this is the longest story, but after narrowing out and we're ruling out pretty much every possible thing could be, I think I, I've attributed it to stress. And I think I went through telogen effluvium, which is when your body is in a constant state of stress or a very stressful event happens to you. So you lose hair. My body was just so stressed that all my energy that would go into maintaining my, my hair, my skin, like my skin was always just not pre and I always had to cover it with foundation and now like I'm not even wearing foundation and I feel so confident and so happy. So 10 days after I officially quit my news job was um was on a day I was on vacation in Florida and I washed my hair for the first time. Or not for the first time, but I washed my hair that day and I was expecting to go into that shower and shed a bunch of clumps of hair and cry like I did every single time I showered. And I showered, I washed my hair, and a very normal amount of hair shedding girls, you know what I'm talking about, came out, because every girl, you know, it's normal to shed hair. It was like astronomically less, and so now everything's back to normal in terms of how much hair I shed. And so I'm wondering, or I'm concluding, that my sleep schedule was affecting me and my body so much that it was letting go of hair just to conserve energy of some sort. I don't know what the what the science behind it is, but all I know is 10 days after quitting my news job, my hair stopped falling out. And that was really important to me. Apart from the hair fallout because of the sleep schedule, the sleep schedule also completely took away my social and personal life. I am someone who likes to go out on weekends. I'm not a crazy party animal, but I love to go out to a bar, to go out to eat, to go out to see family, friends, like this whole thing. And every time Friday came around, I was just so tired from the Monday through Friday ordeal that Friday nights, Saturday nights, or Saturday all day, I just wanted to stay home, watch TV, and take naps. And that's what I would do. I'd take a nap Friday afternoon for like four hours. I'd take a nap sun or Saturday in the afternoon. Then I'd go out to dinner with my boyfriend and his family or I'd go, we'd go out for drinks or whatever. And the whole time, it's like 7 p.m. And the whole time on Saturday nights, I'm thinking, I want to get home because I want to get 10 hours of sleep tonight so I can be ready for Monday and to start the schedule all over again. And I was just not present in anything I did outside of work because I was constantly thinking about going to bed. And it was just this constant cycle 
I, I kind of felt like I was in a high school relationship with my boyfriend because I only saw him on weekends because of my sleep schedule because he gets out of work at 6 and I'm sleeping at 5, 5.30. So I'd have to wait until Friday, Saturday to see him and then Sunday our day was cut short because I'd have to be in bed by 5. So I was just constantly missing him and feeling so alone. All the people that I had to turn to and talk to daily face to face were the people at work and they kept me going. Shout out to Karen, Sierra and just so many people at WA and D that I Carly, I could name a thousand people, but they really did help my experience be so much better because at least I had that human interaction. But when I got home until the time I got to, to sleep, it was just hang out with the dogs for like an hour, try to work out, which would be hard because I'd be exhausted and then go to sleep. It was just not a life that I could envision. And thinking about how this was my dream, this is probably the most philosophical and deep we're gonna get, okay, right now is how I know this was my dream. And then I started to have this whole crisis about, okay, then what is my dream if this is not working for me? And I had so many cries, so many therapy sessions over what I think my dream is. And I narrowed it down to, I realized rather that my dream is the life I have, the life I want to have outside of my professional workplace. So my dream is to have dinner with my boyfriend every night. My dream is to go on sunset walks. My dream is to, uh, when I have kids, to be able to take them to school and pick them up from school and have energy to spend time with the kids, the so-called future hypothetical kids. And I was just thinking about how this is my dream, my, my desire to be a fully functioning woman with eventually a family. And I feel like news was holding me back from my life outside of work. I felt like I was waking up every day, like living to work rather than working to live, live my, live my life, if that makes sense. And everything just revolved around my job and I just knew that that was not healthy. I knew that I wasn't happy. On top of everything I just mentioned, I was getting headaches weekly, like a three to four migraines weekly. Again, just feeling pretty much like shit is the best way to put it. News made me feel more self-conscious, weirdly. So we don't get makeup artists, we don't get hairstylists, we don't, you know, unless you make it to the big markets like New York City, LA, Miami even, you know, you're not gonna get much to help you look your best. And that's okay, I knew that. And so having to do my makeup full beat full out every single morning at three in the morning for four whatever i was always hyper focused on how i looked because i'm on tv like how could you not be focused on your appearance if you're on tv and that's how and that's how i felt so i just over analyze hyper analyze every little thing about my face and every pimple that i would get or every little texture change that i would get on my face and and this sounds so silly but i just constantly knowing that i'm on tv and that i have to present myself in a certain way gave me anxiety in terms of not feeling like I looked pretty or like I looked my best. Like, you know, there are days where you literally look not your best. Like your hair is up in a bun and you're in sweats and you feel fat and you feel like this, all these things. And I just felt like I couldn't have those days or I would have those days, but then I'm forced to go on air. And I just, I felt so ugly. Like I just felt, I mean, and that this is definitely a self-esteem, self-confidence issue, but news added to that. News didn't help it. And it's something that I definitely have to work on myself, but the situation just didn't help me help my, out myself, if that makes sense. So you might hear me say all this, and if you're familiar with the news industry, you might say, okay, then don't anchor, be a reporter. Reporters aren't, air all, aren't on air all the time. And they sometimes can have nine to fives if they are day side reporters. So like, why not go reporting? Well, that's a whole other video about how reporting gave me a lot of stress as well. Long story short, your day as a reporter, the days are never similar. There's no really sense of routine in terms of you wake up every day and you have no idea what you're doing. And some people love that, thrive on that. I thought that I thrived on that, but then I realized, no, 
I like stability and I like to know what I'm doing and I like to sort of be in the mindset of not the unknown and with news there are so much unknown I mean you could be working on a story and there's a fire and all of a sudden you have to drop everything you're doing to go to that fire and that would give me anxiety because I'd say oh my gosh I just interviewed all these people for the story now I'm gonna have to scrap it and I felt bad and I just I got too attached to everything and the emotional stories really got to me and stick with me and I had nightmares about crime scenes that I had gone to or fires about the families that lost everything and and even having to tell people this every morning there was great stories of course but there was also bad stories and those are the ones that would stick with me more than the good stories and I feel like I'm a very positive person and I started to be very negative like an email from about a shooting would come in to our um, newsroom email where like three kids died let's say and I'd be like yep makes sense no, that doesn't make sense. Of course, I knew it doesn't make sense. Like, this is crazy that this is happening in this community or in the country or whatever. But to me, I was like, yeah, this another day, another dollar. Like, this is what happens every day. And I, I just was so affected, but unaffected at the same time. And it was just really messing with my emotions. And I think you can gather basically how I feel about reporting and the stories that I had to share. And I don't want to spend too much time on this point, but towards the end, I found it hard to work with some people who were mean to me. And that didn't make me want to stay anymore. Mean to me, mean behind my back. So, so it's hard to work every day with that. And that contributed to leaving WAND, but, and I don't think I've emphasized this in this video, I have not closed the door completely. I have kind of creeped the door a little bit open to news and I, and I want to try again in Florida, potentially just my time in central Illinois had to come to an end. Lastly, I felt news is really attached to my identity and that kind of scared me. Everyone knew me for being the news anchor. Everyone knew me having, you know, TV in my name and my entire family friends and and don't take this wrong if you're a family or friend but you guys are so proud of me for doing this and i mean i'd go to a family party and the first thing someone would say to me was ahí está sofia la reportera like there is sophie a reporter she's our star she's like this and just hyping me up and of course felt good felt awesome and i was very proud to like have everyone be proud of me I'm like, if they're so proud of me, why am I not the happiest I've ever been in this position? It just, I felt like an identity crisis in a way. And then I felt like I was doing it for other people. I felt like I didn't want my coworkers to be disappointed in me. I didn't want my boss to be disappointed in me. I didn't want my parents, my friends, my cousins. Like I just felt like I was disappointing myself and so many other people by by potentially leaving. And that's how I knew that I kind of had to because I was doing this for other people and I wasn't doing it for myself. I was doing it because I wanted other people to be proud of me. And so I knew that that wasn't a good feeling that I should be having. And so that definitely as opposite sounding as it is, made me want to not be that, to, to leave news so I can be something else and not do something for other people, but do it for myself. And I don't want to touch on this too much because I know it's taboo and I know it shouldn't be, but whatever. The salary potential just isn't there. And knowing where people are in my dream positions in Florida or around the country, like knowing their salaries and thinking that was my ceiling just didn't make me feel good, especially because I hope and pray to be a stay-at-home mom one day. So I wanna make as much money as I can now to support my future family. And just news wasn't letting me save money. I was always coming out even. I had to rely on my dad a lot for flights to go back home and things like that. So I just want a job that just pays more. And I, in college, I was like, I knew this. I knew that the, the news industry didn't pay a lot, but I always said, oh, but I'm passionate, it'll be fine. 
well, it's not fine when I want to go home to Florida and I don't have money for my ticket or I want to buy like a new hair styler thing and I can't fathom spending over 50 bucks on something. You know what I mean? Like I just knew that my money mentality was not good. And so I wanted to make sure that I can provide for myself and be comfortable and provide for my future family because I don't want to be pinching pennies when I do have a family in the future. And I'm, I'm working hard now for me in the future, if that kind of makes sense. And so I needed a job that made a lot more money now so I can work hard and just grind. If you made it this far into the video, it's been a while. I am thankful that you made it this far into the video and I appreciate any support. I feel like you watching this is already some sort of support to me of just hearing me out. I think this was the hardest decision I've ever made and I still cry about it weekly. And it's a little bit, there's less emotions attached because I feel more detached from news, but I don't regret it. I do miss it a little bit. And I hope that in the future, if another door opens to news, I can take it and give it another chance because I do think part of me Part of my heart just belongs to the news industry, but maybe a year goes by and I completely change my mind and I say, no, actually, I never want to go back. But right now the door is open and um, to anyone going through something similar with a career change or if you're trying to get out of news, I highly recommend trying to go to another station before you make the decision. I kind of wish I could do that, but I'm just bunkered down in central Illinois for now with my boyfriend and we're not ready to leave. So... Um, I'm open for any questions, comments, concerns. And if anyone wants to chat more personally about this decision, I am so open to that. Just message me on Instagram. Um, my Instagram is Sofia I Espinosa. And thank you again so much for watching. I hope everyone has a great day, whatever day or weekend or week. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.